My name is Sven Soiland and I work for Bologna Foundation, which is an environmental NGO based in Oslo. Uh, the reason why I'm at this COP is that we work on several climate issues. We work to try to find, identify solutions that can be applied and used uh, while we're waiting for the, the big agreement to eventually surface. So I understand that you live at, look at short-lived um, greenhouse gases that perhaps um, um, are easier to tackle than carbon. Can you tell us more about them, please? Yes, uh, the Bologna Foundation uh, discovered uh, quite a few years before Copenhagen that uh, super pollutants, among them the, uh, the refrigerants, uh, we could end up having a very big problem and there was a vehicle ready to solve it, uh, the Montreux Protocol. And since then, we've been working together with other NGOs in order to promote this idea that the Montreal Protocol could actually, uh, being the most successful environmental convention, could actually solve this issue for us. What other, um, that, uh, you, you mentioned uh, refrigerants, that's HFCs, we've mm. got those under control. Um, we're here in Poland where there's a lot of coal-fired power stations. Mm. Um, uh, black carbon, can you tell us more about that and the effect that's having? Certainly. Uh, black carbon uh, uh, comes from diesel engines. It's, it affects indoor air quality to the extent that uh, it's more lethal than uh, malaria. So it's, it's really a, a, a terrible plight. Um, my organization has been working on black carbon emissions in the uh, northern part of Russia, which in addition to health uh, damages also have the issue of uh, reducing the, uh, or increasing, reducing the albedo so uh, the ice and snow will melt quickly and it will heat up uh, the, the ice. <clears throat> so we, we looked there at uh, the, the practices of burning uh, agricultural waste and also wildfires. How can, um, w what conventions can reduce black carbon? Obviously it's not coming under this meeting. Is it a case of going back to the Montreal Protocol or getting uh, each government to um, take action? Uh, no, no soot, you're, you're quite right. There is no convention that actually covers soot as such, but it is a health impact. Uh, luckily, there are a lot of good initiatives to address this, especially within the Climate and Clean Air Coalition. What other short-term gases are there? I think you mentioned um, methane from agriculture. Uh, methane also comes from agriculture, but uh, and from, uh, from uh, waste uh, deposits. But what we focus on in that particular area is the methane emissions from oil and gas uh, installations, which is the second biggest after agriculture. So we have, uh, over the last year, we have been doing some mapping and trying to establish what kind of measurement instruments that could be used in order to get a better grip of uh, the methane emissions from oil and gas industry, both in, uh, that are in the Arctic region. You seem to be quite successful in, uh, um, in uh, identifying and trying to reduce short-lived um, emissions in the atmosphere, um, but you don't have um, a big uh, meeting every year with thousands of people. Does it show that this meeting is, in fact, pointless? I, I think we need to have two thoughts in our head at the same time, because uh, uh, looking back to Copenhagen, uh, there was a number of NGOs that were uh, arguing strongly for a legally binding contract uh, agreement uh, and, and, and calling any other small bottom-up approaches for a, for a um, diversion. Uh, many of these NGOs now have changed completely uh, focus and say, let's do all the small things. And they have lost faith in the, in the big, big guild solution. Uh, we need to have both things going at the same time. And I believe actually the small uh, initiatives and the concrete things that happen between countries and within specific sectors will enable us to get bigger trust between countries. So that could actually be leveled up and, and result in or make it more possible to have a global agreement somewhere down the line.